Nitro. We do. I almost called it Impact, and then I almost called it Thunder. <laughs> but in fact, it is Monday Nitro. <laughs> they do all blend together after a while. Yes. WCW Monday Nitro number 233, also March 6th. Of 233 <laughs> weeks of watching this show. Four plus years. Also March 6th of the year 2000. We're almost at the end. Almost. When we started, it was a long way away. Sure. Now it's right around the corner. I'm... I don't know what I am. Time keeps on slipping. In I, I, it's kind of weird. Like, I'm going to be sad when it's over, but I'm going to be happy. Sure. Does that make sense? Absolutely. But, I mean, there, there's still that little something about Nitro that I look forward to every week. Cause it's just, no! Yeah, I do. It's just always so weird. Like, Sid's going to be on it. And, Sid is great. You know? There's going to be some fun stuff. i got 54 more drives up here, and then, then I'm riding off into the sunset. <laughs> oh, yeah? You're, you're, you're hanging up your... Mike? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I was going to say, not boots. I don't know. Okay, Rob, start watching the shows. <laughs> Got it. So the camera fades up from black, and Finley and Vampiro are uh, falling uh, backstage for some goddamn reason. <laughs> okay. As much as I said I'll miss this show. Right. This, Liar! This. These fuckers. Like, how many times did they have to show us that they were fighting? 15 fucking times. Austin. Three, at least three times in the first 10 minutes. Over and over. I was so sick of Vampiro mm -hmm. by the time. And I, I like Vamp, but fuck. I was so... They just are fighting incessantly. Somebody do something. Opening match is Kaz Hayashi versus Psychosis. Or, as his own manager, Juventud Guerrero, called him, Psycho Lose. Okay, so... <laughs> like, is was Madden... Ma was Madden, like, making fun of Hoovy, or was he being an idiot because he called him psycho the entire match to the point that I was starting to get furious because it's not his fucking name he didn't do it the whole match he got like one psychosis in Age so I know he knows the man's name the answer to your question Brian may well be both well I was I was furious wasn't name psycho a youth wrestling federation star yes yes, he was. yes a multi-time champion I might add was he better than psychosis uh, no okay so the young dragons are a thing. Better physique, oh, than okay. that much. Okay. The young dragons are a thing now, or as Tony called them at one point, the Jung dragons. Right. How would he know any different? What Tony? Yeah. Well, I, I, I wasn't. It, they actually spelled it with a J. Yeah. Pronounced it young, they so. spelled a J. I mean, obviously. So no one bothered to tell him, "Hey, it's, Tony." It's pronounced Young, yeah. but it was spelled J U N G. Yeah. So they're doing this match, and Finley and Vampiro brawl down the ramp. And into the ring and keep on fighting and brawl out of the ring and back up the ramp and it's not a DQ. Nobody does anything. Where's the fucking security that's all over Hoobie the show? Hoobie is like, what the fuck's going on? Tony explains, Charles Robinson can basically do nothing. The fuck he can. <laughs> He's the ref. He can throw the match out. Now Prince Ikea comes out. Because This was, is the opener. This wasn't enough. You're going to miss the show? Sorry, Finny, would you shut up? I'm sorry, Craig, I interrupted you, but I'm riled up now. No, there just wasn't enough distraction. You had to have two sets of people come out. So the Prince Ikea comes out. Paisley's arguing with psychosis. This lets Ikea hit... Wait, no. Paisley's arguing with Hooventude. This lets Ikea hit psychosis with the belt, and Kaz wins with a roll-up. Mm -hmm. Fuck this show. You're gonna miss this show. Oh, would you shut up, Vinny? Come on now. Where the fuck are we going to be able to see a Ric Flair, Kurt Henning match with this show off the air? We're not going to fucking see anything like that on Raw. We're not going to see anything like that on SmackDown. We're not going to see anything like that on any WWE pay-per-view. It's a style of wrestling that when this show is dead, it's gone. Unless we start going back to watch... You want to go back and watch Thunder? No. <laughs> then you better miss this fucking show. And we're never going to see Paisley in this outfit again. Sweating. You'll never see Paisley wearing something like that. <laughs> Not no, 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 no. I was going to know where to go with that. I was talking about this Paisley. Yeah. On, on now wrestling. Vinley and Vamp are fighting some more. <laughs> yeah. Did you say Vinley? You did. Yeah. Three segments with Vampiro and Finley. The show is not even ten minutes old. Jarrett laughs at this because Sid has a team with Vampiro later, and clearly Vampiro can't be trusted. He can. Why? He can't be relied on because he's just an idiot brawling with Finley. <laughs> Finley attacked him and grabbed him by the neck at the start of the show. What the fuck do you expect the guy to do? He's blowed up by main event time. I don't know. Gene interviews the Mama Lukes. See? This is why I'll miss the show. Okay. Disco, in the greatest moment of his career, even better than when he talked about on TNA, building the evil architect, 
when he looks at the camera and with a straight face refers to the Harris brothers as the hairless boys. Yeah. I laughed. That was a good I one. laughed out loud, laughed. The hairless boys. And then Johnny had some line about he won't eat another cheese sandwich until he beats the Harris's. He vowed to eat no more cheese sandwiches until after they beat the beat the hairless twins. And and he doesn't get cheese sandwiches, he gets mad. And Vito was doing the worst shadow boxing I've ever seen in my life. There would be kind of a hell of a promo on Big Ron. Yeah, he's a good promo. Yeah. This was fun. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'll Vampiro is back on my TV screen. Yeah, I won't miss that. He's throwing a tantrum. Vinny, when this show is over and we no longer watch it, when are we going to see Club Lavella? We won't. It's Never. True. It's only ever on It's Metro. over. It's true. But, yo, but, uh, but I will counterpoint that one. Where are we going to see Ricky Ratman? Well, I'll tell you what, I'll never see him again. I don't because I fast forward through it, so <laughs> I'm not going to lie. He is at Club Shakers in Raleigh. They're on campus at Duke. So I'm looking at this and I'm <laughs> watching this segment and I'm looking at the way these guys are dressed. I'm like, man, the guys at Duke really are total douchebags. Mm-hmm. Then I realized, oh, wait, that's Shane Helms. <laughs> oh, Vinny. <laughs> now, he's part of three count. He's supposed to be. But, okay. Sure. The team package arrives at the building. You're not going to miss team package. <laughs> <laughs> with Ric Flair. A team named after one guy. Named after a package. <laughs> named after the package. I mean, there's so many ways to interpret this. Are there now? Yeah. Ric to... Flair, team package. Sure. Hello? Do I need to explain this to you? <laughs> and then they randomly note, Vamp just walked out the door. But later, he's just there. I didn't even catch that. <laughs> yeah. He left and then decided, ah, fuck it. I got a match tonight. <laughs> I suspect that happened at Nitro all the time. Yes. <laughs> Big Ron versus Big Vito. There are a trio of signs in the crowd plugging visit me online at, and there's a URL that no longer works, but I took the name of the young lady and she apparently was uh, active in the film world for a while. Carrie Cox. You're all looking at me with curiosity. Excuse me? That's where that's where her name. Excuse me? That's what it said. Was she part of Team Package? <laughs> Maybe we have auditioned? I don't know. Okay, this match went less than a minute. <laughs> yes. In that less than a minute, we got a pinfall, but the ref was distracted. We got Disco pulling the Harris out of the ring. We got the other Harris rolling into the ring. And the illegal Harris pinning Vito after hitting him with a chain. <laughs> then the ref sees a replay and makes it all a DQ instead. Yeah. All of this for less than a minute of action. You know, every so often Madden cracks me up with his one-liners. Tony said, would you call that a mafia kick? And Madden says, no, I'd call it an Italian-American heritage kick. Madden is much better than I remembered. Yeah. I remember him being terrible. And I really, turned on him when he kept talking about Psycho. He, <laughs> he, he can be annoying sometimes. Sure. But his, his, his delivery is great, and some of his jokes actually are funny. He had one uh, later when... Oh, we'll get to it. Uh, Hennig, first Hennig calls somebody Fatso, and <laughs> yeah, Madden was outraged right. it might be him. <laughs> yep. And then Flair... I think it was Flair. Somebody called a guy in the crowd Fat Boy, and Madden clarified, That's I want to on the record that is not me. It was funny. Mm-hmm. Did we mention that a Harris shoved a cop? Yeah, Harris shoved a cop, and the cop pulled his, uh, his nightstick out, and the Harris's ran away. Yeah, they just ran away from cops. That- so I was furious about that. But then they cut backstage, and in fact, the Harris's get arrested. Yeah. So they're being arrested, and they can't figure out why. Why are we being arrested? You dipshits. <laughs> well, you shoved an officer. Mm-hmm. And then one of the Harris goes, we never touched the officer. I was like, it was right there on on camera. (laughs) This was very strange. They're not very smart. I was going to say, Brian, it's a bad show. This is the explanation for all your your questions. Uh, Meanwhile, on Thunder, the wall chokes the crowbar through a table. Yep. The announce table. The announce table. It blew up. Yep. So tonight here on Nitro, it's David Flair's 21st birthday. That's a shoot, by the way. Yep. They used to say he was 19. I don't know why. They lied about his age. So because they claimed he was 19... In storyline, in WCW canon, he went from age 19 to 21. He was never 20. Interesting. (laughs) That's kind of weird. How does that even happen? Not sure. How can you skip an age? Well, you've been lying about years for years. What are you talking about? Yes, Rob. I can answer that question. Lots and lots of alcohol. There's, There's no alcohol in wrestling, Rob. I see. Aging himself. That's what Rob's saying. I see. Or he just drank so much he forgot the year. Hmm. Point being, David says, Crowbar lived for wrestling. Yes, lived, past tense. He's dead. 
<laughs> he he's deceased. Died after going to this table. Yeah. So he's going to take his. When did David paint his, paint his crowbar gold? By the way, he has a uh, gold crowbar now. I think it was last week. He it was gold. He's going to take his gold crowbar and tear down a wall. So we had the bit with the Harris's getting arrested. It's Sid versus the one thing about the show that I will say is a positive, and something Nitro has been really, really bad at lately. They make it abundantly clear what the card is for the upcoming pay per view. They plug like six matches for this show. It is Sid versus Jarrett for the title in the main event at Uncensored. Great. A match. We have a focus to build around. That's fantastic. David Flair versus The Wall. The Wall stacks up two tables. David briefly fights him off. Then David, like a moron, is celebrating on the ropes above the tables. Mm -hmm. And The Wall grabs him and throws them through. And David He's 21, Vinny. He's young. And, and apparently, much he'll, he'll smarten up. like Crowbar, he mm -hmm. ha he's, he's passed on. He's because dead. He was, this was treated yeah. like a uh, the end of the world. Yeah. yeah. The match just stops. He's stretchered out. Daphne was crying slash screaming. Crying. She's cry, scream, scream crying, cry screaming. Kurt Hennig and Terry Funk and Arn Anderson all run down. And Kurt turns to Arn and says, the old man should have been out here. Oh. That asshole Ric Flair not caring about David. He's got package business to do. What now? Yeah, you heard me. Backstage, Bam Bam Bigelow scolds the wall for being <laughs> such an asshole. <laughs> they're in a stairwell, okay? <laughs> so they're in a stairwell, and Bigelow is below Wall on the stairwell. Wall's just, he's standing there. Yep. Bigelow goes, you asshole. He didn't say that, but he's basically well calling have. him an asshole. He goes, what did I teach you? He's just a young fella. It's his birthday. He's just trying to make a living. He's got bills to pay, he said. I'm like, this is Bam Bam Bigelow with this speech. <laughs> He got old, dude. So the wall responds by punching him on the stairwell, and fucking Bigelow leaps backwards through a table. <laughs> I laughed so hard. <laughs> like, that's a hell of a punch. It was that's wacky. a 400-pound fucking man that you sure. knocked off of his feet, <laughs> sent him through a table. It was wacky. So apparently Bigelow trained the wall. That's, hmm. the, that's, that's the story here. He asked, did I teach you this? Oh, wow. And the announcers were very surprised to learn Bam Bam trained the wall. God damn, it's like Star Wars. What a revelation. <laughs> The wall trained Bam Bam Bigelow. No backwards. Bam Bam no. trained the wall. Oh, yeah, whatever. So Bam Bam is Obi-Wan and the wall is Anakin? Something like that, yeah. yeah. Sure. Three count versus the dog. Got to find out who the wall's father is. It's got to be next. Guessing the foundation? <laughs> it was building the evil architect. Yeah, I was going to say, building. <laughs> there you go. Ah, uh, so the dog sucks. They bring the dog out. <laughs> Fucking A. This guy's Kevin Nash's tag team partner from 10 years ago. There's a reason he's pretty much disappeared for the next 10 years. Who is this guy? It's Al Green. Al Green, the, uh, dude. The other Master Blaster. Al Green. That's right. Thank you. So the, it's Finley and Knobs. They got him on a chain, and he's barking and spitting. And they take him down to ringside. They put a hood on him to calm him down so they can take the chain off. Then take the hood off, and he's a rabid dog. And he's running around doing wrestling moves. Not very well. No. Oh. So first is the dog versus three dudes. Then it's the dog versus one dude. Then it's three dudes versus three dudes. I have no idea what this match actually was. He's Takashi Azuka is what he is. He just didn't have the iron fingers. But he won, and then he tried to eat Evan Courageous. <laughs> he pinned him with the avalanche power slam. At one point, he was chewing on the rope, and the camera zoomed in on him. They put red contacts in this guy's eyes. Yeah. He's rabid. It's ridiculous. I guess that makes your eyes turn red. Like, like all dogs, you see. Team package promo. Again, they make it very clear it's Lex versus Sting at Uncensored. And later they would add the stipulation it's a, hand, uh, excuse me, a lumberjack match where all the lumberjacks are the dudes with casts with broken arms courtesy of Lex Luger. Mm. Seems like biased lumberjacks, but all right. So Lex says Sting is a coward. He's hiding from me. And Sting never showed up, so I guess he was right. Gene asked Flair, how can you be here given what happened to your son earlier? Flair says... Hey, he's 21. He can take care of himself. Look at me. I'm the picture of health. And he moves on. <laughs> Says, Hulk Hogan, you better not mess around with a nature boy in Chapel Hill. Jarrett tells his women to prepare for a promo. He's walking around now with Tylene Buck and Medeja and another one just named Kim. Don't know whatever happened to her. Nitro girls are back dancing. Sid, backstage, has to talk Vampiro into coming back for the match. Vampiro says okay, and Sid's all happy, and as the walk it back, Vamp just says, Jesus. <laughs> that is what he said. <laughs> Jared does a promo. So his gimmick here, which I guess he does multiple times a show, he comes out with three hot women and then immediately sends them to the back. 
It's to get heat. It is to. Uh, thank you, Craig. I didn't yeah. understand it. Now it's also clear. I know. I do think it's funny. These women got paid the same. It's of true. course they did. <laughs> Fly out. Yeah. Which is the hard part. They're trying so hard to get Jared over his heel. Yeah. That this is this is what they came up with. He's got hot women people want to see. He gets rid of them. Yeah. So Jared, Cheap. Jared vows to win the title at Uncensored, and he announces The Wall will be his tag team partner tonight. Oh, I cannot wait. <laughs> the stroke in the wall. Wall stroke. If this were WWE, that's what their team would be called. Wall stroke. That is better than Boston Hug Connection. <laughs> yeah. Thank God he wasn't named the shower. Shower stroke. Anyway. Yeah, we <clears throat> understand, Greg. <laughs> Between you. What? Lenny and Idol are playing with the Deben's casket or something. <laughs> that's what happened. <laughs> they, were, they were trying to weld it shut. Uh, later we found out they're playing they're talking about Rizats here backstage this is their whole gimmick they, they were they, trying to weld his casket shut later they should have just left it because it got stuck a couple weeks ago yeah no welding required so Lane and Idol's whole gimmick is they bought the F4W insider terms booklet mm. and I use these terms <laughs> on TV we're chasing rats or Rizats and getting over and they find the demon's casket and they get an idea do you have one of those books around here anymore mm, I doubt it hmm. Kurt Hennig walks Ric Flair walks then we get Kurt Hennig versus Ric Flair. Okay, this is why I'm going to miss this show. I loved this match. It was good. It's not like a great match or anything like that, but Flair comes out. He's he's like 50. No one's going to boo this fucking guy. They're in North Carolina. He's in Chapel Hill. He, he tries to bury this Carolina team and put over the rival Carolina team. Yep, everybody cheers him. Yeah. So they do this match, and I could watch these guys wrestle every day forever. I just loved it. Just a basic, great professional wrestling match. Luger interferes right for the ref, not at EQ. And then Hennig just grabs Flair, Hennig Plex, pins him. That's what happened. Lean in the middle. All right. Who gives a <laughs> shit? I don't even care. Now, do I they, liked it. Do they both have to walk naked through Minnesota now? Uh, may, maybe this win negates Curse Lost. I, I week, presume so. this was negating it, yes. Yeah. Then uh, they yeah. double on him with the belt, and Luger whacks him with a baseball bat. And literally, Arn Anderson runs down to the ring. Was I the only one whose first thought was, wasn't he fired? In WWE. I got very confused. Oh, like in real life. Yeah. I just remember, I was just talking about Arn being fired, well, he, and there he, he was. He got fired in storyline in, in like 1999, too. Yes. But he, he was brought back somehow a month ago. I, I, I forget exactly how. But. So Luger's going to whack Arn in the back with the bat, but Flair, no, 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 no. He saves Arn. Flair calls off the, the I was going to say the dog, but he was earlier in the show. And Mark Madden alerts us. Arn had neck surgery. He's got a bad neck. And if if he would have been hit in the back of the head with that bat, it would have been fatal. 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 He would have died here tonight. Just like show. Crowbar died on Thunder. Yep. It's very serious business, Vinny. I guess so. So, <laughs> I love matches where veterans are in there and there's, you know, the, 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 it's, it's not like a pay-per-view match. It's a random throwaway Nitro match. And they don't want to do anything so they say, let's just chop the fuck out of each other. They say, all right. And that's what they do. <laughs> cool. Vinny, that's a very, very complex technique. <laughs> let's just beat each other up. Hmm. It's the way it should be done. Fuck these spots. There were no spots in this match. Ah, this is a fight. Yeah, these are two, two tough guys fighting. <laughs> I don't want to see any flips. I don't want to see them chop they the shit out of each other. It is some flops, but no flips. Mm -hmm. So yes, as promised, Lane and Idol have found welding gear. I guess these guys are metal workers in their spare time. Seventeen they, they, torches. They know how this everything. torches work. Yeah. <laughs> They're welding the demon's casket shut until he walks up and taps them on the shoulder. This leads to Scooby Doo level comedy where they don't know who's tapping them, and then the demon beats them up. I guess they beat him up by the end. Why were they going to weld the casket shut? He wasn't in there. Why do Lane and Idol do anything? To get over. With the Rizats. Yeah. <laughs> you asked. You <laughs> I, knew the answer. I did. Why did you even ask? I don't know. We have more from Club Shakers. So the Loden... Sounds the, like a fun place. I'll, I'll Not say. as fun as I thought. The best moment on Nitro. They're loading Kurt Hennig into an ambulance. They have the air cast on his arm. They're tending to him. They're checking you know, his vitals and stuff. And the guy examining looks down and says, I think you might have broken your wrist. And Kurt looks at him with fire in his eyes and says, No sh- Yeah! <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Lex and Flair celebrate their win. 
or breaking of Kurt Hennig's arm. Uh, Norma Smiley versus Lane. Yeah. With Idol on commentary. So Lenny tries his moonsault, and Norman moved like an hour earlier. <laughs> so he just literally moonsaults right onto his face. Yes, yes. This is uh, about a minute after he tried a tope on Hilo and yes. landed on his head. <laughs> yeah. Lane, Lane was no good in a scary way. You know, he should have just chopped. He should have just chopped. That would have made things a lot easier. No, yes. I, I would not have gasped with fear multiple times during every lean match. So fucking Miss Hancock comes out. She gets on the table. She turns and faces the crowd. Nothing happens. It wasn't her cue. She stands there for a while. <laughs> then she just starts gyrating a little bit. Just poses. Man says she appears to be gyrating, <laughs> but no music. And I'm like, no shit, there's no music. Apparently someone forgot to play her goddamn music. I see. So she just stood there forever. And then Norman won with a choke. And some shit happened. And that was that. Man, I had to go bonk. And uh, yes, Norman, uh, I think it was a cross face chicken wing. Regardless, he won. And then the demon attacked, and they tried some four-way spots, but Lane and Idol were involved, and so they get fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Lane and Idol may be worse than the Headbangers. In fact, I'm pretty sure they are. I don't know, Vinny. <sighs> I'll, rem I'll, I'll remember you said that the next time we see them Headbangers. I'm sure they're TV. coming back yeah. at some point. I, 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 you just saw one of them on NWA. I thought just crossed my mind. I th I'm, I'm thinking over this now. It's a bad thought. Either Sid way. Sid promo. Sid he whispered too much. He yells and he whispers. He yeah. promises final judgment day for you, Jeff Jarrett, and we'll see if you measure up to the master. <laughs> this loser Tank Abbott arrives. Tank Abbott storms in the building. Hey, dumbass, where's the locker room? <laughs> yeah, he's mad. I would be too. <laughs> so Tank gets in the ring and... I love Tank Abbott. Dude, Vinny, <laughs> you got this weird infatuation with Tank, but fuck... This was horrible. <laughs> but it was different. He fucking... It was different. I'll give you that. Sure. This was not a cookie cutter's pre-written promo. He gets in the ring. <clears throat> and you can always tell he's nervous. <laughs> yes. Because he paces around. Yep. And he can not give any moments of silence. No. He must be speaking at every possible fucking second. If he pauses for, for an instant, it's too long for him. Yes. And he's got to babble something out. So he's mad. He says Sid is the luckiest guy alive. He couldn't hold a candle to my jockstrap. That's right. what he said. I was like, do you want him to hold a candle to your jockstrap? Because I don't want a candle anywhere near my fucking jockstrap. Pretty sure those are flammable. So he explains, everyone. Mm -hmm. So for those of you that forget, it was Sid versus Tank Abbott last week. Oh, mm -hmm. boy, was it ever. And Tank Abbott beat the hell out of Sid. And then Sid just put him in his hold incorrectly. Yes. And then Tank Abbott submitted. Was defeated. Tank comes out here and he says, The only reason I tapped last week is because they were going to take me off TV. What? What? <laughs> okay. Real or fake? What the fuck are you talking about? I assume he was worried that if he... Beat Sid and won the world title. They were going to take him off TV. He would never get any more airtime. So if this is real, sure. okay, if this was real, he's worried they're going to take him off TV, so he gave up in a world title match? Yeah. And if this is fake, <laughs> I guess he, was he saying, thinks they're going to take him off TV, and so he willingly just gave up if, in the middle of the ring? If he didn't do the job. He's clearly a shooter. Well, so then, then he says... <laughs> Nobody can touch me. I'm not leaving the ring. No way, no how. I'm not leaving this ring. You can bring out the matches. You can bring out whoever you want. I am not leaving this ring. Are we clear? I heard yeah. you. Okay. First man that comes out is La Parca. Because I guess he's going to wrestle in the next match. Sure. Okay. La Parca comes out with a chair. Tank shoves the chair into his face. He punches him. The park is dead. Okay? Tank says, I will not leave this ring! So then, Meng's music hits. Now, few things. First off, I'm so fucking mad we didn't get Ming versus Laparka. They better <laughs> give me that goddamn match next week. That's the match I want to see. Second, when Tank came out and said, I will not leave this ring... Doug Dillinger and security are out there trying to get him to leave the ring. He says, I will not leave the ring. 
So Meng pushed his the baddest motherfucker on the planet. Meng comes out and J.J. Dillon says, No, Meng, you may not get in the ring. It will be a 60-day suspension without pay if you get in that ring. So what happens? Meng says, Oh, fuck it. I don't want to go 60 days without pay. He leaves. And then Tank Abbott calmly gets out of the ring. Mm -hmm. And he leaves. He changed his mind. (laughs) Are you absolutely fucking kidding me? That's what happened. Name one thing you liked about this, Vinny. You can't hold a candle to my (laughs) jawstrap. You didn't laugh when he said that. That is the that is the depths that we have sunk to here. How about when he called Sid a big white headed oaf? No, that was not enough to save the shit segment. How about when he said, "When I'm in shape, I'm the baddest man on the planet." <laughs> well, that's just facts. Okay. Otherwise, by the way, didn't Tank beat Ming? I thought I could have sworn we saw that match a few weeks Did ago. Did you take a Ming? I could have sworn they did. Tank I don't and remember. Ming. It sounds being awesome. Giddy. Yeah, I would, I would, I would. Giggle. I do, I do think maybe we remember it more. Now, was Tank trying to say that he could have beaten Sid if it were real, but because who the hell knows? <laughs> I was. Just, it, I've been trying to figure this out for like days because I watched it days. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you this segment was good. Thank you. I'm going to tell you it was fun. Kind of. Okay. <laughs> I had fun. It, this is this is not a bad actor reciting pre-written bad dialogue. It's what so the horrible. fuck are you talking about? Horrible a horrible actor, actor <laughs> well, reciting yes. horrible dialogue. Well, but are was, you kidding but me? But it was not pre-written. I believe <laughs> Tank true. meant every word he said. I believe you're out of your mind. That's possible, well. too. The Magic Girls dance again, and it's not dance music. It's like hard rock. Yes. It's like Slipknot is playing. They're like, well, I wouldn't go that far. Craig, you're more of a music man than I am. Who who, who did the sound like? It was it was just, Godsmack. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say Disturbed or something. Okay. Like there we go. Not dance music. <sighs> this Hogan promo. Oh my God. And last week we recapped the Yappa Pie Indian Strap Match promo. Yes, we did. And everybody who doesn't watch these shows with us talked about how. Oh my God. I unironically love that. It's my favorite moment in wrestling. They are incorrect. <laughs> this is the one they're thinking of. <laughs> This was absolutely incredible. Hulk Hogan is, it's like a green screen promo from the mid 80s. Thank you. Yep. He's got two straps. Mm -hmm. If I would have had time, sadly, I did not have time. I would have gone back and written down every single word that he said, which would have taken forever because unlike some promos, he talks so fast, Mm -hmm. it's just impossible to recap. I did write down one line. Mm -hmm which I think encapsulates everything that you need to know about this promo, okay? He said, in the Yappa Pie Indian strap match, when you're in the four corners of the battle zone, the main priority is, is to get the body in the proper position for the strapation, dudes. Strapation. And he went on from <laughs> there. A quote. And he went on from there. He vowed to double strap him with both fists. <laughs> yes. Flair will scream to high heaven, please, Hollywood, don't hurt me anymore, and I will never stop. That's how it ended. So, yeah, some, I didn't write down every word, but he had some lines here. He released the doctors. He would signed the paperwork to release the doctors from their responsibility. Wrist flexibility is very important in a strap match. He mm. says, because, That's what he said. Because, again, yeah. it's important to get the body in proper position for the strapation dude. He literally said, it doesn't matter if my fucking arm is broken. As long as I have wrist flexibility, <laughs> well, I'm supposed to be very flexible with a broken I can arm. Win in a Yappa Pie Indian strap match. <laughs> so he explains he's going to beat up Flair, then call for the strap master, Jimmy Hart. <laughs> strap master. So Hogan's standing there. He's got two Hulk Hulkamania weight belts. Mm. One is yellow letters on red leather, and the other is red letters on yellow leather. God, you could put them together. I guess so. They'd be all red or yellow. I guess so. He says. Jimmy will pass him the Yappa Pie Strap of Punishment number one. There are two. <laughs> and he whips Flair, or whips the ground with it, makes a loud noise. He's like, I'm going to whip you with this, you <laughs> Skinner Bubble. And then I'll call the Strap Master for Yappa Pie Strap of Punishment number two. And he will double strap you with both fists. It was a line that he said and he used. Sounds lewd. You will beg for mercy, and I will never stop. In the Yappa Pie Indian Strap match. When you're in the four corners of the battle zone, the main priority is 
is, he says that twice, by the way, to get your body in the proper position for the strapation, dudes. And he said this with all seriousness. Oh, yes. There, this was not a comedy promo. No. This was not even one of those flair promos that's supposed to be serious, but he doesn't give a fuck. So it's comedy the way he says it. Hogan was being real, brother. <laughs> This was a 1980s promo in 2000, complete with a teal and purple backdrop. It was. <laughs> yeah, this this was this was an anachronism. I did love this with all my heart. <laughs> this Vinny uh -huh. is what I will miss. Fair enough. The show is gone. Fair enough. He never does his shit again. I don't know where you will find promos about strapation. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never find something like this. They don't teach this at the Performance Center. No. <laughs> I'm sure they don't. Kidman versus Stevie Ray. Out comes Big T and that other guy. Cash. He's now Cash this week. Yeah. He was Cash as before. So he's about to... Kidman is about to introduce a tag team partner, but then he cut him off, and then Booker comes out. I guess it's a tag match out all along. Booker and Kidman... Booker and Kidman feuding last week. I believe so, yes. yes. Okay. So Booker hits the bookend and he and uh, Kim hits the top rope elbow, but Cash pulls the referee outside. A second re referee runs out, and as I wrote here, Kidman gets pinned somehow. Yeah, that's what I wrote. Cool. He got hit with the slapjack. Mm. I'm glad one of us was able to discern that. Yeah, Tony said something else like he got paintbrushed is what he said. <laughs> like, no, he got hit with a slapjack. Well, paintbrushed with a slapjack. Jarrett gives the wall a pep talk. Dustin Rhodes walks. So, <laughs> Dustin comes out with barbed wire. I gotta read some of these lines as well. This is what I will miss about this show, Vinny. Dustin Rhodes says, I knocked out Funk a few weeks ago. Last week, I damn near broke his back. Both times, he kept coming back. Why? For you people. I don't care what you idiots think. You're marks, internet freaks, and smart cheat sheet writing. Not writers. Writing. And not, not dirt sheet. No. Cheat sheet. Smart cheat sheet writing. And you make me sick. Terry Funk comes out. Remember that promo that Funk cut on Ric yes. Flair? If only Ric Flair were here to respond to this. <laughs> he calls Dustin a chicken. A quote, chicken choking peckerhead. That's what he called it. Does a foghorn leghorn impersonation in the year 2000. Right. Only he could pull this off. <laughs> Says Dustin is just like his overbearing, fat, obnoxious, egg-sucking dog of an old man. He says, I have something for you in my sack. He says, I have your baby brother yeah. in this yeah. bag. I thought, Cody? Cody? <laughs> I thought we were going to see Cody's debut. Instead, he says, your daddy's a little Bastard child. I'm going to show it to you right now. It's a fucking chicken in diapers. He has a, a raw chicken. A whole raw chicken in diapers. Which you he won't see this on raw. No. No. Ever. He throws the raw chicken in Dustin's face. <laughs> you can't even and it bounces that. off the mat. Ew. <laughs> Salmonella yes. everywhere. Yes. <laughs> so, oh, he, he, before, excuse me, he licked the raw chicken. Then threw it in Dustin's face. Right. He's hardcore, baby. <laughs> then it lands in the mat. That was so gross. <laughs> it's just a chicken. It's a raw chicken, dude. Well, you know. Don't lick a raw chicken, everyone. And don't throw it in your friend's face. Or your enemy's face, actually. actually. don't lick a live chicken, either. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> so. Don't be a chicken-choking peckerhead. That's, you know, that's advice we could all use. Mm -hmm. So, Funk challenges Rhodes to, a bar Rhodes to a barbed wire match, but Dustin throws powder in his eyes. And Funk comes back and slams him on the barbed wire, and Dustin runs away. Weird. Yeah. It was weird. <laughs> weird. Yeah. It, you it know, was totally that's what weird. I wrote right here. Weird. I will agree that it was weird. <laughs> I, I will make it unanimous. This segment was weird. Now, before that, Brian, you skipped over Ricky Rackman. Yes, oh, I did. Interviewing three count. Because mm. he fast forward through it. Now, again, on Nitro, their goofs... They're geeks. They think they're cool, but they're not cool. Right. But they go to these nitro parties, and allegedly now they bring in the women, and all the women think they're hot and awesome. So, like, did did he go to them specifically about what their gimmick was, and they explained it that way to him, so he would put them over? Does he not watch nitro at all? I I doubt it. Jeff Jarrett's walking with his women. 
The wall is walking with no women. Yeah. Sid and Vampiro are walking and Sid's just screaming. Jeff Jarrett and the wall versus Sid Vicious and Vampiro. Now, I will say this, Ryan, for, for, for Nitro. They tried something new. The wall and Vampiro are in this main event. That's you know what that is, Vinny. That's, that is something new. That is new. And in the end, neither guy did the job. No, neither guy was there to get buried. So Sid hits a choke slam. The wall breaks up the pin. Vampiro gets thrown to the guardrail. We get the exact same tease of a double choke slam spot that Kane and the Big Show did. We on We did. The show. It was on both shows. And and all four guys were cowards and wouldn't do the spot. We get a rough bump, a guitar shot for Sid. The wall choke slams Sid right into his head. And Jarrett pins the wall. So there you go. That sets up Jarrett versus uh, uh Yeah, Sid. shouldn't there be an instant replay as said via precedent earlier in this very show? Well, if it was a good TV show, Brian, uh, yes. Okay, but it's yeah. a bad show. <laughs> not awful, I wrote, but not great. Uh, correct. That's that's fair. I don't ever need to see this tag match again. I'll talk about the whole show. But I don't ever need I'll, I'll agree. I don't need to see this. But I would match agree again. that this match was not awful. And also, not great. Yes. I do know you want to see a double choke slam, Vinny, but that's ridiculous. It is. That's why I want to see it. How could you even work it? It defies total Like you both leap in the air yes. and somehow go backwards while holding each other's neck? Yes. It would be completely preposterous. It would be straight out of a cartoon. I need you to go to Buddy's Ring and try this with somebody. I might. Okay. See how it goes. Hmm. Let's do your song. All right. God, I wrote a lot, a lot about these finishes. I hope it's a long song. I can loop it. The finishes on this show were pinfall after two guys brawled into the ring and a woman and a manager argued at ringside and there was also interference with a belt shot. Pinned by a guy who was not in the match with a weapon shot, which was then switched to a DQ. No finish when a guy gets put through tables. Pinfall after interference by four men. Pin despite interference. Submission despite interference. Pin after one ref is pulled out of the ring and another ref runs down and I have no idea what happened in between. And pin after guitar shot. Ah, you almost got it done in one one loop. I guess there've been worse. Well, there you go, everybody. Another night in the books. Another week. History. <laughs> one week closer to the end. WCW Monday Nitro. We should do a countdown. Because literally, it's, not a bad idea. it's the end of March. We're just over a year away. <laughs> Christmas time. That would be too late by then. I say we should buy an advent calendar. And with 24 <laughs> weeks to go, we just start going through it. We, I'm sure we can find one. You, I'm sure you can find an advent calendar on Amazon. You probably can. Regardless of when you try to purchase it. All right. Well, we're out of here, everybody. I'll be back tomorrow with more, as we always are. Filthy Tom. Got a special surprise on the Filthy Tom show, so check it out. Check out this show at video.f4wonline.com if you want to see the video version. And that is it, everybody. We'll talk to you again after a while. Good night. Adios.